Hi all, I have a very exciting game to show you from round 6 of Long Chess Classic. It was the round of a lot of decisive games actually, so actually a clue that it is a decisive game. Veselin Toplov was playing against Wesley So. Let's have a look at this game. I think it is very instructive for the attacking player. So e4, Wesley So plays e5, knight f3, knight c6, and we see Goku Piano. An invitation with the Goku piano if black plays bishop c5, which he did. This, by the way, is the, the Italian game. But now Goku piano, c3. This is like the classic move in this position. It's the most popular uh, to construct the center. Knight f6 is the most classic move. d3. Now, quite often, either d6 or a6 is played. We have in this game a6, which gives the, the bishop a convenient pigeonholes go backwards in case of the move for example b4 sometimes or d4 we have a4 and now you would see without a6 b4 actually and a5 would be would have been dangerous we have d6 bishop g5 and black just retreats the bishop <clears throat> in advance of of anything here black just retreats the bishop knights bd2 very energetic play after this uh, now in uh, let's see have we gone off the rail here after bishop a7 usually just white castles actually okay so we have knight b so we have h6 being played and the bishop retreats there now g5 very aggressive so black's not castling uh, honestly this is how I often play my bullet chess uh, or blitz chess because uh, it's a lot of fun but usually I, I try and wait for white to castle black hasn't even waited for white to castle uh, I'm just wondering if it would be less safe and quite often I'm not casting but here actually Wesley so not only doesn't wait for the opponent's castle he plays this and then just castles here the thing is how does white exploit these moves you might think in theory the light squares have been weakened but if we what white just castled if we play a move like h4 it turns out g4 is sufficient this position uh, if we try and undermine there's knight h5 uh, so if the bishop moves back there's g3 if we protect the bishop f5 is possible for example like this g takes and uh, rook takes f5 black's fine here black's more than fine black's actually technically doing very well so curiously to play this and then castle white just castles we've got a strange looking position and it looks like some sometimes this is a classic kind of highlight is an issue for this pin in this case where you get a locked in bishop there was a classic Capablanca game where Capablanca exploited such a bishop uh, right into the end game now here though after knight h7 there's an idea simply to try and trap the bishop because it's protecting g5 so h5 h4 is is on the cards white plays h3 h5 is played anyway okay white's given his bishop a pigeonhole uh, but now okay we see d4 and this is just taken not minding about liberating this bishop a bit across this diagonal knight takes d4 which hits h5 and threatens to double black's pawns black protects the h5 pawn by playing g4 uh, and threatens now g takes sometimes as well as h4 sometimes and g3 this would squish the bishop if the bishop was on h2 we have g3 potentially uh if if we especially if we have that pin but we do uh okay after h takes g4 h takes g4 we do actually get a pin on f2 here because white plays knight takes c6 so you see that this has become pinned b takes um already by the way white may have slipped up to be quite honest in this position white may be actually suffering here uh before taking you further let's have a look in this position possibly a, a major alternative to consider is taking on c6 yes doubling the pawns but not playing this playing instead h4 which keeps the h file shut uh, down and the bishop's kind of safe okay although we've got this pawn pin it's this is a fine position it seems for white this would actually be okay e5 would stop 
any uh, knight g6. So black would have to be careful. And this position, this pawn sack is dangerous. White then controls light, light squares and it's, it looks nicer for white, uh, this position. But that wasn't how the game uh, continued though. You see that pawn on h4, white actually plays hg. So we're in the game continuation now and you'll see some big differences from that. After e5 it seems as though the same sort of thematic thing uh, but actually uh, not d takes e5 here just uh, d5 bishop e2 and now queen g5 protects g4 and black has on the cards either f6 or f5 to again try and squish this bishop with that pawn really pinned if the bishop goes back then there's g3 actually winning the bishop now white is in an emergency situation here already at move 19 this is a really dangerous uh situation from the point of view of just f5 f4 believe it or not it seems very strange uh to have this uh just from what was normal looking moves but black you know playing energetically earlier but this is really an emergency here white plays a5 as if to try and rescue the situation with a rook coming to a4 to put pressure f5 is played anyway so there's the immediate f4 to try and win the game and the bishop at the game it's taken knight takes but this doesn't help white too much because black is threatening not just what you might think knight h5 to harass the bishop which has by the way got c7 but also simply king g7 with the idea of rook h8 and something like queen h6 would be mating white so in this position uh just just to show uh well white played rook a4 but what if you might wonder what if bishop takes c7 as i mentioned there's two ideas you know this other idea king g7 with the slow idea of rook h8 but it's not so slow because what really makes it possible without right white having too much resourcefulness is this pinned pawn um and yeah there's also the possibility as well of g3 in this position as well is dangerous but say bishop g3 which stops g3 rook h8 rookie one queen h6 and this is end of game it'll be mating on h1 there's no f pawn push that's pinned so that's the kind of uh scariness that's facing uh white in this position so you know rook a4 but now uh we simply have rook f7 dual purpose not just protecting c7 but he's going to switch the rook to h7 uh and we still have this other threat potentially knight h5 but without bishop takes c7 uh we have rook e1 now knight h5 this is just all over uh if you look at this position it's it's virtually what does what does white do if if this black has nice choices um g3 or f2 just just to show you what is the actual strongest it's probably probably bishop takes f2 and if here knight g3 is is a mate actually it's a it's a forced mate sequence like this yeah it's it's incredibly uh direct uh this game it's crisp and direct like a kind of morphe game it's like you know how morphe would zap his opponents this is a very dangerous position it's actually technically it seems absolutely lost white plays bishop takes g4 now after knight takes g3 we have this check a token check really because in this position black is now threatening things like rook takes f2 or bishop takes f2 or even queen h6 with the knight supporting queen h1 checkmate there's numerous uh, threats uh, white plays rook takes c8 and believe it or not this is a forced checkmate sequence after bishop takes f2 check can you see the right move for black to play in this position if i gave you five seconds starting from now okay queen e5 yeah with the threat of double check and mating soon after that uh yeah this was played king h3 but after knight e2 now white resigns topolov resigns 
black is supporting queen g3 checkmate here so even if the knight's taken the bishop helps support queen g3 this is a forced mate in four believe it or not uh just just to run it through you know rook f4 we just take that's pretty hopeless um knight e4 we just take you know these these are the best computer tries so something's gone severely wrong uh, to have this position at move 27. It's it's an incredibly sharp, concise uh, victory and shows maybe Topolov's like out of shape. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this game annotation. Comments, questions, likes, appreciated. Thanks very much.